Oh, that's the only way to kill an elk is a hoochie mama. That'd be something good. Oh, Smarties. <laughs> Where's your hoochie mama? In my pocket. We got to go elk hunting this year. Right. We kind of, we grew up elk hunting. And that's probably where our, both of our passions started was bow hunting elk yeah. as kids, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I still remember like it was yesterday when the first time I ever went elk hunting with you and Jeff. Yeah. And that six point bull walked across the hillside about 150 yards above us and bugled. And I was just like, oh. And he came down to the edge of that like strip of alders and like he was just above it like 70 yards and we just like didn't know what to do, yeah. screwed everything up. That's just a right. giant you know herd bull it's amazing like for that i mean obviously you remember it vividly yeah, too oh, yeah. but just like that one instance as kids makes a huge difference or is like that's all it took yeah to start like hooked. a lifelong passion hooked yeah. yeah hooked for life but this was a cool opportunity to go elk hunting where it wasn't a general tag right. you had the tag mm -hmm. i got a video i wanted to see you kill a sumo giant bull that was the goal yeah and you were just like, oh, I'll shoot a two point. <laughs> well, not quite like that, but. I'd be happy to make a good clean kill on a, you know, a decent six, you know, like yeah. 280, yeah. 270. I don't like, to me, I just killing an elk is the cool thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really in, in the grand scheme of things. Right. Everybody's maybe journey in elk hunting is a little bit different. Some people hunt for meat. Some people hunt for horns only. Because you're more of a meat hunter, would oh, you say? Yeah, I've, I've shot more cows with my bow than, than bulls. Yeah. And I remember when I found out when I was like, I think I was in high school, I'm like, oh, you can kill a cow elk with a bow? I'm going to start bow hunting. Because you couldn't kill cows. With a rifle. With, with, yeah, with a rifle. There was no cow hunting. And I'm like, well, pff, I can hunt longer. And I can kill a cow. Yep. Get I just, I've always shot the first elk I've had an opportunity at. Yeah. Yeah. You know, besides a calf. So it was kind of fun to come together and, you know, meat hunter and more of a trophy hunter and let's hold out and find something good. Right. That was kind of the mentality. Were you nervous about that? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, well, there's all these other responsibilities. And then it's just like, I've just first elk I see that I have an opportunity at, I'm going to shoot it. And you're like, oh, I'm going to pack your arrows for you. Yeah. We got a bunch of rain today and last night and uh, cooled down a lot. So day three, I'm going to check some new spots here and see if we can't find anything. With the weather change, it sure should help.
against each other. We're just coming up the ridge. And you hear clankety clank. And Justin's like, there's two elk fighting right down behind us. Right, 280 type bulls. No bugling though. I think today's September 8th. There's so many nooks and crannies in this country. It's easy to overlook things, especially when they're not bugling. Pretty impressive. I've never seen anything before. Never on a country this open before, really. Hard to just sit there and watch. Man, we, we hunted just as hard as you would anywhere mm -hmm. and covered the country and looked over as much elky country as we possibly could and learn. I mean, this is a new unit for us. Right. So we got some intel, but still, I mean, you, you got to figure it out for yourself too. <clears throat> right. And I think what was big with that is having a bunch of backup plans. Right. A bunch of different areas. Well, this didn't pan out. Let's go here. This, right. this didn't pan out. Let's go there. Right. Um, this year was a little bit different year uh, with elk movement. Uh, early, they really weren't doing too much. Really hot. Yeah, and it was like over a week before we even heard a bugle. Yeah. And I mean, we covered a lot of country. We hunted close, we hunted far. Another day, trying to find active bugles here. The elk are starting to move around. Uh, this is just a state section up here. Not much land, but you never know where they could be, so. Every day was getting better. It was still pre-rut. It did seem like the rut was really late. Mm -hmm. And that's, for me, you know, the, the perfect time to catch a big bull mm -hmm. is pre-rut, before he has cows, mm -hmm. maybe he's still cruising, looking around. Mm -hmm. They're the most susceptible to calling, mm -hmm. bottom line, mm -hmm. you know, in my experience. Right. So seven days later, on the 11th, we, uh, we found some elk and a lot of the the cows that we saw had younger bulls with them so we knew that like okay you know the big bulls are still staging we're not going to really necessarily focus on the big herd but we're going to focus on the periphery mm -hmm. and sure enough i think you saw the bull yes i heard him yeah you heard him first mm -hmm. and then you caught a glimpse of him it was just like this bull is moving he's a big bull we don't know exactly what he is but he's by himself Let's go try to get on them. We, we spotted them from the truck a ways off. And so we had to like, we just boogied. Yeah. Like you didn't even have your pack. Yeah. You know, it's past daylight and he was going across the open. We knew that there was some cover up here and we're like, ah, maybe he's going for that cover. That pocket of timber. Yes. Yes. And so we got up kind of across from that pocket of timber and I mean, he'd gone late. quite a ways. He'd gone a ways. like oh yeah this is the situation that we're looking for mm -hmm. this is a solo bull he's you know bull calling cows bugles just a really intense with no chuckles uh, really loud 
and he, he was hitting bugles fairly often. I mean, once every couple minutes, I would say at the minimum. Mm -hmm. And then he would feed some and then rip. And I was like, oh yeah, this bull's looking for cows. We, we're gonna go call this thing in. And we, he, was, he went back into the trees and started raking. Yep. You could hear him yep. raking. He, he started raking. I think that's when we took off again, mm -hmm. got up in the timber on his side. So we, we stayed up on the timber side. We, we stayed to that cover uh, because we, we knew that our game was going to be to call them in. Mm -hmm. But we got up there, and I, and I remember we crossed that creek, and we're just looking for terrain. We're looking for a fold. We're looking for anything that could hide our cow calls. Mm -hmm. Because these old bulls, you know, they're smart. And in areas that they don't get hunted as hard, like a general area, uh, they call in easier than bulls do in general areas that yeah. get hunted. Yeah. So that's, that's something to keep in mind, too. Mm -hmm. But still, I mean, elk are so good at pinpointing your calls. Yes. After the first calls, we ran uphill, mm -hmm. you know, to get away from where we had called from. Yep. And there was kind of a little bit of a fold. Yep. And we tried to direct, you know, direct it down, back down yeah, the creek. Yeah, direct the calls back down mm -hmm. in the creek. Yeah, I've never, never done a frontal shot before. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I haven't either ever shot frontal. And there's a lot of different schools of thought out there on them, but I think what I've always told myself is that if it's within 20 or even within 15 yards mm -hmm. and it's frontal, I'll shoot. Yeah, it just comes down to risk and, you know, repetitions. I mean, a lot of bow hunting, it's a game of not only inches, but half of an inch. Yeah. And it's just... You know, for me, it's like getting in my mind, getting in this bubble where like everything goes out and I kind of just revert to a learned behavior that I've practiced so much that it just happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and not having to think about it. You know, I was tired from all that running and gunning and my mm -hmm. blood sugar was all over the place because when I get those adrenaline rushes, my blood sugar goes up, I don't feel as good, kind of clouds my judgment. But then, you know, being able to like adjust on the fly, like constantly yeah. being dynamic Yep. in your ability 
it's tough, but it's just the only way to get better is trying. And, you know, I never had, no, yeah, I just never been a fan of frontal shots and never had a need to do that. I've always taken yeah. broadside or quartering away. Yep, yep. But it just didn't have that option. Yeah, yeah. And so he comes in at 40. Yeah. And so you set your sight for 40. Well, yeah, because when we set up and we could hear him over here, there's kind of a little finger ridge and there's this tree. And I'm just like, that elk is going to come right there. So I range that tree and I'm like, you know, I'm used to hunting general, always hunting general over the counter. Yeah. And so like when an elk gets into a certain spot and can see, if he doesn't see anything, he ain't coming. Yeah. And so I'm like, he's going to stop there. He's going to turn and I'm going to shoot him there. Yeah. And that was, that was my mentality. That's kind of how I hunt. I wasn't expecting him to come mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to that spot and then keep coming. Yeah. Like it, that just didn't make sense to me. It was yeah. just like the perfect scenario where he was really getting fired up yeah. and he wanted to keep coming. And he couldn't, I don't think he, he still couldn't quite see. I mean, he, right. he knew where the calling was coming from, yeah. but there was enough terrain there. So this bull is walking right down the trail, right to us, fairly relaxed. I'm videoing right behind you through the, the gap in between your head and the bow. Yeah. And I mean, he's coming, he's coming 30 yards, 20 yards. He keeps walking. He's probably at 15 yards. Yeah. And we we're in the shadow just perfect. And we had that dug fur for a little bit of cover. Mm -hmm. he, he just like, I remember in the video, well, he just, just looked downhill, like looking for cows or whatever downhill and you drew your bow at 15 yards and he did not see you. Yeah. And at that point, you draw your bow and I have nothing with the camera. So I literally did one of these. I just like tried to just rocked out without making a sound and trying not to move that much. And that's why on the video, it's at an angle because I just was like, Ugh. he saw me move. Mm -hmm. And so he's looking. So you have two choices. You shoot him frontal at 15 or you wait for him to blow out and hope that you have a chance at him or get him to stop at 30, 40, you don't know. Right, and it was, it was pretty branchy in there with a lot of, yeah. Fires. I think they're both just as risky, but I think the frontal was the thing to do in yeah. that scenario. So, <laughs> made the shot a little high, like on, on a frontal like that, you know, you make an X uh, with, with their body. You wanna shoot them on the center of the body, top to bottom, left to right, make an X on their body, and you want to hit them right down the center. Mm -hmm. That's your aiming point, mm -hmm. right? So you knew in your mind that your sight was set at 40, mm -hmm. so you had to hold low. Right, I just didn't know how low, because yeah. I'd only practiced with my sight set at 30 and shot at 20. I'd mm -hmm. never never shot, you know, set, set at 40 and had to shoot at 20. At so 15. I did, or at 15, and <laughs> yeah. so I, I didn't know what that, you know, difference was. Yeah. Cause I'd never practiced that. And so it was just kind of like, I need to hold low. But once you start holding below in, in the air. Yeah, under his brisket, then right. it messes with your head too. Right. <laughs> and you know, he's locked on and it's like, you know, I found that, found that perfect center spot and I just dropped it down. I think I was at the bottom of his brisket, but because, you know, I shoot such a heavy arrow and I have such a short draw length, you know, 25 inches. Like I've got a lot of, a lot of arc. A lot of arc in that. Yeah. And I just, I was, I didn't hold low enough. You know so. yeah yeah it's just it happens and that's what makes a frontal shot so risky and yeah after this situation i mean you're so you're high into the right and we we're like ah, didn't get him meat hit probably a non-lethal hit and we were kind of like down in the dumps for a minute we're like oh man oh yeah i was i was i was exhausted you know yeah. emotionally drained yeah so we gave him a few minutes and you know walked over to where you shot him and then you know, followed his path the way he went out and no blood, no blood, nothing. We were just following his tracks. And then about 20 yards out, like, oh, there's some blood. Oh, there's some blood. There's some blood. Okay, a little update. Shot that mega giant bull on the path. It's a really poor hit up in the throat. He's bleeding good. He's bleeding like it's a joke.
They don't deserve a bowl like this. You got him. That's about as pretty as they get. Look at those seconds, dude. Couldn't have done it without you, Dan. Appreciate your patience. You know, there's a lot of luck involved, and it's like, yeah, I always said, you know, I don't want to take a frontal shot. And, you know, I did, and it worked out. You yeah. know, luck involved, but I'm never going to get better at frontal shots if I don't do them. Right. So it's one of those things. I mean, do you, at, at what point, you know, you know, everybody has to decide for themselves, are they going to take a frontal or are they not? Yeah. And you know what? I don't think anybody makes a wrong decision because that's what's right for them. It wasn't a perfect shot, but it, it worked out. <laughs> Am I ever going to do it again? I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's for everyone to decide, you know, for themselves. Ooh. Well, shot him right in the jugular, I guess. And he still made it a ways, quite a long ways, but uh, left lots of blood for that high of a hit. A hybrid is so important because you have all that cut diameter. You have a marginal hit, those hybrids will save you. Every hunt's a little bit different. Some are meat hunts, some are trophy hunts. We love the challenge of killing big bulls. And uh, this is just one of those, just hard work paid off, right place, right time. So this is a really special one. We were able to hunt yeah. together, uh, brothers. We, got, we fought like brothers, we hunted like brothers. <laughs> and we didn't kill each other. <laughs> we killed a giant bull, baby. <laughs> Good job. Can we probably use more food cord? Yeah. We're uh, packing meat. This is the second trip for us. And we have one more. So six loads total with uh, the head and the cape. Does it feel like cherry? Feels perfect, dude. Bam. Look at it, and we got them rocked back. Yeah. So you're not going to be high centered. No. Close. Like, it's kind of a tough life, like <laughs> first world problems when you kill elk so big that they drag on the ground. Right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Interesting. <laughs> 